Okay, so I, I want to like um, tell a super quick story about um, the recent enhancements that we've done to um, IPNI. Um, that uh, is a major improvement for the for the user privacy story. So let's first like recap what IPNI is. So IPNI stands for Interplanetary Network Indexer. So what it can be used for? So it can be used for finding content on uh, IPFS and uh, Filecoin networks. Um, so uh, it's a uh, it's used in a, in a bunch of uh, services already in a bunch of projects that I will uh, go through uh, go through in a minute. Basically, the main purpose of API is you give me content identifier. I tell you where content behind that identifier can be found at. So uh, and um, so like before going through the uh, recent improvements, so let me uh, just quickly recap how uh, IPNI works. So it can be uh, explained in four simple steps. So first step is um, uh, we do have like a bunch of uh, Filecoin and IPFS nodes that are connected to IPNI. So and they, whenever they have a new data, they post announcements. So that's step number one. So whenever new data appears on the IPFS or Filecoin nodes, they post announcements to the uh, lib via the lib P2P pub subtopic. So IPNI is continuously listening for those announcements, and whenever it picks up one, it would reach out to the uh, to that node directly to the storage provider and would fetch all the um, all the recent updates from it. So the unit of update is what we call it advertisement. So basically, an advertisement is a unit of um, uh, is, a, is, a, is a structure that contains a list of content identifiers in it. So by announcing advertisements, you tell the IPNI that, OK, I do have these CADs available at my node. So IPNI would fetch it, index it, and uh, that's it. So then after uh, the content is indexed, so a user would can use it to look up uh, some data. So when a user sends a user would send content identifier request to a request with content identifier to IPNI, and IPNI would return it. Hopefully, a list of providers where the data can be fetched from, and then the user would uh, would go uh, would reach out to these providers separately and download the uh, receive the data and uh, download the cat picture. So why IPNI is awesome? So it's uh, awesome because it has two properties. It's a uh, uh, open protocol, so anyone can can run an API instance. Anyone can participate in it. However, it can be run as a centralized service, and running it as a centralized service provides some advantages. Specifically, the advantage is that it can significantly helps reduce time to first byte for uh, in the in the general content retrieval story. So one can find uh, content on IPFS and Filecoin networks much much uh, much much quicker. So, what the problems we tackled with the uh, with the uh, previous upgrade? Uh, there, there are two issues with the with the record, how IPNI uh, is used right now. So, uh, let's start with the uh, with the number one. So, if if there is a man in the middle that observes user to IPNI traffic, so they can see in open what content identifies the user is after, and they can just spy on the uh, lookup responses to the to the user. And uh, they can just reach out to the same storage providers and download the same data. And by doing that, they can spy on what data is user after. So the second attack vector is the ROG uh, IPNI deployment itself. So if uh, IPNI deployment is malicious, uh, someone can just it can just like spy on the request it receives and also can see what what data the users uh, the users is after. So and this is obviously not good. So uh, the way we tackled it is with recent upgrade to our previous story, which is called double hashing. So what is double hashing? So uh, in a simple words, without going to any details. So inst now instead of like uh, uh, providing uh, looking up raw data in IPNI in open, so instead of like using raw content content identifier, the user would use hash over there this content identifier, mm -hmm. and in response, IPNI would send a provide the records, which is encrypted with the original value of the content identifier. 
So what this means that in order to make sense of such communication, if someone is spying on the users, uh, uh, one needs to know the original original content identifier. But the content identifier is gets never revealed in the in the first place during such uh, communication rounds. So that enables much better privacy story for the uh, for our users. So uh, double hashing is already running in fraud. So uh, we're running a big API deployment, which is called seat.contact. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, right now how the encrypted responses look like. So, so the one I have uh, open here is the uh, regular response. So if I, I can send a request to seat.contact, if you see in my browser, and it will respond me a bunch of the records where the content behind that uh, content identifier can be found as. So the, the, it's essentially a list of uh, providers with their P2P identities, their addresses. So I can just go through through this list, establish connection, download the data. So if I do a uh, encrypted lookup, so instead of re returning uh, data in open, it returns obfuscated, uh, uh, gets obfuscated data that I cannot make any sense of without knowing the original content identifier. So if I don't know it in the first place, then I cannot decrypt the uh, decrypt the provider records and I cannot spy on the on others' communications. Uh, next steps for us is to finish all out to see that contact. So currently we cover about 80% of the of the lookup requests and this number is growing. So we need to update the uh, existing clients. So uh, uh, IPNI is, uh, is used by a bunch of different projects, such as Lassi, uh, which is the Filecoin retrieval client, such as Kubo, which is uh, the most popular um, IPFS implementation. So it's used by uh, digital CDN like Saturn. It's used, uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of places. So basically, we need to update the existing clients and existing integrations so that they use double hashing by default, so they don't send regular lookups anymore. So we need to work on the so-called rights of privacy upgrade. So rights of privacy would uh, allow publishers to advertise encrypted data into IPNI. Right now, this data is still in open. So we're protecting only user privacy at the minute. Uh, and yeah, uh, that would hopefully make IPNI even more awesome and even more usable. So, and if you have any questions, any suggestions, or you want to use IPNI or like, you want to ask something, please reach out to the IPNI Slack channel on the Filecoin Slack. Uh, yeah, and that's it from me. So thank you a lot for listening.